Welcome. I'm going to go over a quick run through of setting up a V Ray render. Uh, this is a basic file using a daylighting system. Uh, the first thing we need to do is make sure render, menu, current render, that uh, V Ray for run is selected. Once we do this, uh, we should see these toolbars up here. Uh, this is the main V Ray toolbar. Uh, material editor, VRA options, shown in the frame buffer rendering, real time rendering, which you probably shouldn't use yet, uh, add an infinite plane, which I'll go ahead and do, load it into the scene, go ahead and move that onto a new layer. the AV Ray Sun. Uh, this is quite opposite of what you'd think. You uncheck it to get manual control. Gives you date and time, year, month, daytime, and down here Google Maps like uh, location. So we're going to be near Chicago. Early morning, late afternoon is best. Go ahead and say early morning, say OK, and then it's waiting for me to click. I click and I've got a little arrow icon in my scene that will emit light in the direction of the arrow. Uh, the next step is to go ahead and make sure you have materials. You can click on the M, that is the material editor, it opens up. Uh, the material list, which is empty right now. If I right click on the scene materials, I can tell it to create a standard material. This will allow me to double click and rename it to something like white. And then I can change that diffuse color to be white. I can right click and duplicate that material. And double click rename gray. And make this gray gives me two diffuse materials uh, for the assignment. You're being asked to use a basic diffuse material and create a glass material. Uh, you can go and say load material which will open up the local library of materials that comes with V-Ray. Uh, you can see there's a glass folder and you can select uh, glass. There's a couple other options in there but we'll just get the basic glass. So that's loaded. Um, you can see the difference between a diffuse material just has a diffuse layer. Uh, the glass has additional layers, which you can add by right-clicking on the material name and creating a layer. Uh, there's another option named emissive that will actually generate light in a scene. So if you want to model a lamp, add it to a light bulb, it'll actually light up from that light bulb geometry. Uh, the diffuse and Reflection and refraction all work together, so I can preview this material or not. I don't think I have my license set up, but if I previewed it, I would see it wouldn't be transparent. Uh, you can control transparency through changing the colors on the transparency for refraction and diffuse to a lighter color. This is going to be transparent because it's white. This is going to be opaque because it's black. Uh, with that, we will pause to be less transparent on the next rendering of the preview. So we've gotten less transparent. I can move this back up and get it closer to what we're looking for. So the next step is with uh, materials is to create some geometry. Of course, I had to restart the machine or the Rhino to continue. So I'll have to do this again. All right, so we've got our infinite plane, our sunlight, which you can modify under the properties. If you want to edit later, you do have to go uncheck the manual control again.
The next thing would be to add some simple geometry under this standard toolbar. If you're missing toolbars, you right click and say show toolbars and scroll down the standard toolbar group here, standard uh, V-rays at the bottom. Uh, if you hold this button down, you will show all the primitives. You can pull this off to have it float. I'm going to create a cube. Uh, yeah. A tube. And a sphere. The sphere is going to be in the ground, so I'm going to move that above it a little bit. So I got three objects. If I hit the vendor button now, everything's white. So this is where you actually have to go and change the options and tell the system that you want to use a physical camera. Uh, most of the control and exposure is here in shutter speed. That's two hundredths of a second, so it's a pretty fast shutter. If you wanted to slow it down, you could put a 4 in there, that would be 1 quarter of a second. If you wanted to speed it up to like 500 or 1000, is a thousandth of a second. Uh, interior shots, lower number. Exterior, bright, sunny day, higher numbers. Uh, the default usually works fine for a typical outdoor daylight scene. The interior, maybe a 30th of a second of the Farnsworth house. So we've told it we want to use the camera and talked about shutter speed. The next part is to give it a sky and link the skylight and the coloring of the shadows to the sun. Uh, this M button will let you choose a map. Uh, most of them are procedural maps in this list. Uh, the bitmap is the only one that lets you p pick an image of on a computer disk. Let's do sky. And then link it to my son. For some reason, the GUID ID for Rhino is listed in the drop down menu, so that is typically your son. And you should only have one. Do the same thing with the background. Alright, so my environment's linked to my son and on. I've set my camera. Uh, you can set the resolution of your images, keep it small for uh, test renders, but you can increase it on your final render. So I'll go ahead and hit render again, and I should see much better results. So what you're seeing here is a basic sunlight render with global illumination. Uh, sometimes if the skylight in your environment is grayed out. It's because global illumination is not turned on, so you can turn it on here. You shouldn't have to change too many other options in here. I like to use light cache instead of brute force, but just changing that drop down and leaving the defaults should be alright for most renders. Uh, you can see this kind of white glowing artifact here. This is because we're not using any of the materials yet, uh, so that's what we'll do now. I'll try to use the variety of materials on these objects. I'm going to go ahead and give a couple layer names and move objects into them so we can assign materials by layer. Alright, so we've got a couple objects. We've got our infinite plane. And what we can do is assign different materials to each object. So let's say we want the tube and the sphere glass. Uh, we click on the material. There's a little ball here. This will put up the layer material editor. You tell it that you're using a plugin, which is V-Ray, and hit the browse button, drop down, and select the material you want. I'll go gray for the ground, 
sphere. We want it to be glass. The box we will make white, just to defend diffuse color. And the tube will take the glass as well. All right, so all of our objects in here have materials. We could probably put the sun on its own layer just so we don't accidentally give it a material or other things. I don't think it will affect things, but you never know. The render button, and we will see a little difference in the application of materials. The box is a little wider than the plane, which is colored gray. A lot of the sky is coloring the shadows, and you're starting to see reflection and refraction on the tube and the sphere. Your next step is to create and edit your camera. Uh, you see I'm kind of cutting off the shadow here, so I might want to pan the camera over. Test render again, see if I can capture the shadow in there to kind of balance the image out uh, for more precise editing of the camera. You can turn on the camera object that lets you edit the control points by hitting F6. Uh, I had perspective view highlighted when I pressed that. If you press, if you had another view highlighted, it would show that camera, the front or top. So this is where my view is from. I can move it. It'll move the other view. Uh, usually you want to move this middle point to control the target. That is what things are being looked at. And it is typically a good idea to disable snap or grid snap when you're moving around these objects. Uh, this middle control point, I think, moves the whole camera as an object. Uh, this point here you probably never want to touch. It's hard to discern from the target here, but this will actually roll the camera left or right. I'm not going to do it because you have to reset the camera. And then these outer ones control the field of view. So if I want a wide angle, I drag it out. If I want to zoom, I drag it in. And that's about it for the camera control. When you're happy, you click on the arrow in the perspective view and go to set view in the name view menus. This is where you can tell it to save uh, shot one. You can name them other things like interior, exterior, southwest, whichever view they're looking at. So once I do that, I can switch back to perspective view, change it, maybe save another one, or I will have shot one back here where I can jump back to it listed in the set view below name views. Each name view I save will show up in the list here. So when I'm happy, I render. And save my image with the save it's like an old floppy disk to a JPEG. You've got a bunch of other options, but I have asked for a JPEG.